This is the Stank of the South radio show right here on TSSN Online Radio. Today in the studio, we've got Sean Cooley, up-and-coming hip-hop artist from Dunlap, Tennessee, right there, born and raised in the Sequatchie Valley. We have him on today. Also, we'll talk Marion County and their title run. What should they do to win the big one? And also, we'll talk about Mark Rick and his move to Miami. Will it be successful? Could it go bad? Or will we see another 30 for 30 on the story program? Also on the slate, we've got Sequatchie Valley basketball. Is Van Buren way too dominant? Is Bledsoe County too far behind the curve? All of that and more right here on the Stank of the South radio show. Brought to you by TSSN Radio. And I'm Chandler Morrison here, and sorry if I woke you up there being too loud. I, I'm here on TSS in radio for the Stank of the South radio show. I've got Sean Cooley in the studio. We'll get to him in just a little bit. But first, I have to talk about, it, it's, it's the inevitable question, especially with their success here uh, in, in the past year, Marion County. I feel bad for them. They played Trezevant in the state championship, and they lost, I believe, 40-35 was the final score. Close game. They came back from a 14-point lead twice in that game. Twice. I got Sean Cooley over here shaking his head. It, it's just it's just one of these things you look over and you're like, oh, man. You feel bad for them. Last year, they got blown up by Peabody. Yeah, Peabody was good. They were on a run. But you thought, you know what? This year is Marion's year. They're going to go. They're going to win it. They're going to they're gonna go in there. They're going to rally the troops. They're going to get in there and win it. Nope. Not so fast. You know, and, and, and the reason they've had such a great, great uh, run is for one reason, by the way, and I won't get to this before I get into what they need to change, which is not a lot for a good program. But this is what this is the reason why Marion County has success this year. Here's here's Coach Ross talking about you know the Bryce Massengale, Logan Walters quarterback situation. I laid awake a lot of nights thinking, you know, my son's name's Hayden. Thinking, you know, how do, how do you, how do you tell a, a kid that he's really done nothing wrong and, he, and he's not going to be your quarterback? Um, but I, I just felt like the experience of what he brings and he's played a lot of quarterback added some things to to our package. But all of it would never be successful if you didn't have a young man like Bryce that that his character. <laughs> is unbelievable and uh and he just does what we ask him to do and you can see he's so instrumental in our whole package bryce massingale logan walters by the way bryce massingale he was a junior he took his team as a quarterback to the state championship lost in the state championship but still impressed logan walters takes over in the offseason by the way he's an alabama transfer i believe he was from stevenson alabama for Bryce, you know, I mean, he really, I'm not saying he had a choice in the matter, but I'm just saying for him to just say, look, I'm going to do what I need to do so we can win a state championship, that's a big, big character boost to the team. That's a big, big morale booster. Because not only do you have Logan Walters, who's the new leader, you've got Bryce Massengill, who's sitting out here at Wada, who's leading, who's going out on defense and leading. And I think that was the key of their success this year, and I think that's a really, really great story. Uh, and, and for Ross to sit there and talk about it, you know, later in the season looking back saying, you know, that's one of the reasons we won this year. That's one of the reasons we were successful. That's huge. You know, and I see Ross, he's definitely at this program. He's definitely there and going to stay there. I don't see him leaving anytime soon uh, unless the school burns down and uh, their whole starting line just, just quits or something. I don't see that happening. Um, and by the way, neither of those two are likely, in case you're wondering. I just don't think that, that he'll leave. And, but there's got to be some changes, okay? He's got to look at his schedule, and he's got to change his schedule around. But you're sitting there thinking, saying, hold on, Chandler, wait. They have the toughest schedule I've seen in my life. They have to play in District 3-2A, which is the toughest district in Class 2A. And by the way, have you looked at Tresman's district? Tresman's region, excuse me? The second best team in that region. There were five team, four or five teams in that region. The second best team lost to Trezevant by 39 points. 39 points. No one gave Trezevant a, a, a real game until late in the playoffs. Manassas. They played on 22-20. And then Marion County in the state playoffs, in the state championship, excuse me. That's not a tough region. Tough region is Boyd Buchanan, Tyner, Marion County, 
And then Bledsoe County stacked in there. I don't think they're one of the top teams. They're that second tier. There's those top three in the second tier. Second tier, you have Bledsoe County, Meigs County, um, and Brainerd. Then under that, you have uh, Polk County and Silverdale. Bledsoe County is in either, any other region. They're a top. They're the second team. I'm not saying the first team. I'm saying they're the second team in the, in the region, no doubt. Forest region, they're the second team in the region. Lost 28-13 first round of the playoffs. Okay, you got that. Then you've got in Marion County schedule. You got all. You got you have eight teams in that region. So seven teams you're having to play already. They're already on your schedule. You can't help it. Another rival, South Pittsburgh. You can't take them off the schedule. You can't. That's just, that's just if you live in the Sequatchie Valley, it's like taking Bledsoe away from Sequatchie. You can't do that. Uh, you can't take them off the schedule. All right. So you're down to two games that you can schedule. Grundy County. That's a rival. I think what you do, and you can't do it this year. I'll go ahead and tell you, you cannot do it this year because I believe they do a home and a home for this. They try to schedule two years instead of one year. Um, and so you you play at one person's home, you play at another person's home uh, on their home field. So I, I will say that it may be a little bit impossible to do this year, but Next year, what you need to do is, especially if you lose again in the state championship, which is bound to happen with these Memphis teams, with these West Tennessee teams, you, you need to change your schedule around. And I'm saying you take Grundy, you, you trade them for a Whitwell or a Sequatchie, which are both doing pretty good right now. Whitwell got to the second round of the playoffs before being blown out, but that was to Columbia Academy who blew South Pittsburgh out. Sequatchie County got blown out by Notre Dame. You can't help that. I mean that that's just that's just a you know one of those situations where Notre Dame is a better team, Notre Dame a great program, and there, there's still a gap there I believe. Alcoa forty two to two over Notre Dame, and Notre Dame blows out Upperman, blows out Sequatchie County. Eh. But the point is, you got a schedule now. You got Grundy County. You trade them for a Sequatchie County Whitwell. All right, you're down to one game that you can use for for some kind of game. They played Hickson this year. 4A. Hickson 4A. Yeah, I, I give it to him. Hickson was down this year. Hickson about got into the playoffs, even though they went like 0-6 to start the season. That's how bad that, that – I'm not saying that's how bad that region was, but it, it wasn't the best region in the world. East Hamilton was at the top of it. It was a one-horse region, I believe. But but you look over and you've got one game. I think you trade Hickson, you go play Tresement. Why? If they got a lot of their seniors, they return a lot of people, go play them right now. Because even if they lose in the playoffs, you play somebody else, someone had to beat Tresvent to get there. And so you know what it takes to beat Tresvent, and you know what Tresvent did to play them. And now you know what you've got to beat. You're, you have common opponents on film. When you have a common opponent on film, it makes a world of difference. Because you've been on the field with them, you've been on the field looking at them, and now you get to see someone else play them. That, that's, that's the deal. You know, I think that's one of the things you got you got to do. You need to schedule a West Tennessee team or two. I think you can only schedule one with the schedule they have. Maybe not Tresvent. Maybe maybe someone look on Tresvent's schedule. Look on Tresvent and Peabody's schedule and look and see if there's a common opponent that beat them by forty. Go play them. See if you can stack up against them. Even if you lose, it's going to be close. Even if you lose, you take right away that experience. And coach, and we all know how much Coach Ross wants experience for his team. That's just the bottom line. For God's sake, go play Alcoa. Then maybe Notre Dame will fear you. Then maybe Sequatchie County will be scared of you too, which they already are. I'm not going to lie. Sean's over here nodding his head yes. (laughs) But, you know, I I think they need to – maybe a scrimmage. Maybe if you can't – maybe scrimmage. Maybe find a team that's in Middle Tennessee and say, look, we want to scrimmage you and we want to scrimmage Trez, but we're going to bring them over here and you're going to play both of us. All right, good. Three team, boom. You got a scrimmage before the season. You're playing one of the top teams in the in the state. And honestly, you have to kick Grundy County. Honestly, I'm, I'm not saying kick them. I'm saying if you want to schedule a Memphis team, I would kick Grundy County. That way, you have three open dates. You can schedule someone out in West Tennessee. That's what I'm saying. That's my little rant for the day. I, I figured I would talk about this. And, and Marion County, very, very good team. I think they'll be there next year. That region still one of the toughest you'll see. I can attest to seeing I've watched Boyd, I've watched Tyner, I've watched Marion, I've watched Bledsoe, the top four teams in that district. There's no comparison across the state to have those four top, four teams your top team. 
Yeah, Bledsoe County kind of down. I'll say they're a second-tier team. But out of the three, Marion County, Boyd, and Tyner, whoever won that was going to the state championship. Now, I'm not saying they would beat Trezvant, but they were going to the state championship. Marion County blew Hampton out in the semifinals. Boyd would have. Tyner would have. Tyner would have probably had a closer game. They're a little bit more they were a little bit more undisciplined, I would say. They didn't they got some things going. Um but you know, I I feel for Marion County. I wish you the best next year. And I hope that you get there because for all us guys in the Squatchy Valley, we're rooting for you. We're rooting for you. And, and by the way, I want to talk about this for a second. Marion County's got and, and these Valley teams have to get out of the mindset that the Valley's the only thing that matters. And that's true. I mean Bledsoe County, you go. Bledsoe County goes play Squatchy County. That's all that matters all year. Marion County plays South Pittsburgh. That's the only thing that matters all year. Well, apparently not. They want to. St- they went to state championship. But we got to realize that we got a schedule. We can't just stick to the Valley teams. We can stick with the rivals. That's fine. Get one rival, pick them, stick with them. But other than that, get on with yourself. Go schedule these harder teams. Go out and schedule, you know, if you're a Bledsoe County, go out and schedule Upperman, who played Squatchy County. Go out and schedule Alcoa. You might get blow, blown out 42. Go schedule them. Make your program better. You know who's doing that? Red Bank's doing that. Three teams were on their schedule that you knew they had no chance against, even as good as Red Bank was. The coach there, he said, you know what, we'll schedule Baylor, we'll schedule McCauley, and we'll schedule Alcoa. We're looking over, we're thinking, that's three direct losses. Yeah, but it's a lot of experience for that coach. Go out and schedule somebody. You're in the Squatchy Valley, go out and schedule somebody. And I know you may not be able to do it this year. Two years from now, go schedule somebody. Go schedule somebody that you're not gonna, that's not going to knock your socks off, that you can knock their socks off. Get somebody competitive. You don't go out and schedule a cupcake. Squatch County done, has done that several times. They went out and scheduled York. They got beat 4-6 to six one year. I remember that. Went out and scheduled Community, which that was kind of a weird schedule. That was the only thing they could schedule. Go out and schedule Community. First game of the year. That was a cupcake. Don't do that. Go out and schedule someone that's hard. For Pete's sake, Baylor's always wanting somebody to beat up on. Go schedule Baylor. Play them. Show them you're not scared of them. Go schedule McCauley. Show them you're not scared of them. You may lose. 20 points. Go schedule them. Coming up, we got Sean Cooley in the studio. We're going to talk to him about his music. Some Tennessee football. It's always good for that. And uh, we, we got to play some of his songs, talk about his music, talk about some of his albums coming out. You know, he's always fun to work with there. And uh, right now, we're going to send it off. This is uh, Let Em, featuring Illuminate by Sean Cooley. We're going to send it out to that. We'll see you on the flip side of the break. Let him in, I'm gonna let him in, about to put the lead in him like I'm gonna name anyone better than me top notch, not trying to whip with a drop top and I got the top spot every dent, evidently you ain't the evidence, it's evidence and you're paying for every dent, that I throw down and it goes down, and now it's so hard to defeat us, some of these people act sheepish, we'll pull it over their eyes, tell them all they can spar with a demon, I never made a move without a reason, why, cause I gotta be ready to defend my work, work, work. Work. And everybody working for the season But I'm in it for the long haul Double up, double cut, that's all y'all not mine Drop high lines when I write my verse Double dutch on the court, on the limelight I can body anybody that wanna get a piece of this And you really need to quit eventually You see the all my enemies get done up One up, work from night till sun up Finding these rappers and all of them about to get sun up Hold up You can catch me on the road, alright Let them talk and let them hate Cause it gets sold, alright Got a finger for the critics I can show, alright So when we come back to the city We gon' go all night I've been chilling all day Let them talk, let them hate Let them, let them, let them I've been chilling all day Let them talk, let them hate Let them, let them, let them Look, yeah I've been chilling all day, let them talk, let them hate, I'm just trying to be the dope, I'm just trying to make a way, I'm just trying to be the one, let them something that they can't, I'm just trying to let that money talk, I'm trying to break the bank, I've been chilling all day, let them talk, let them hate, let them, 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 let
shit on me. Okay, let them talk, let them hate. I, I'm just trying to be the dope. I'm just trying to make a way. I'm just trying to be the one doing something that they can't. I'm just trying to let that money talk. I'm trying to break the bank. One, back in it like an ad lib. Get it? No cap, I can slap bills. Fit it? No doubt, I can mad skills. Living that they run a bad like a backfield. Smith, damn it. What you know about a kid from the six? It was life and every color me a hit. They got a riot of a red nigga, they can tell that. Cause I eat my beats cornbread mix. I'm, 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 I'm on fire. My flow need a fire fire. I've never been the type of roll green. Smoke breeze to get wild going. I don't need a bonsai. Let me get it, I promise I get it popping. I probably be on the top of a rock and I'm running like it. Give me another year, I'm gonna be there. Let me be clear. And there's nothing you can do to stop me. Back with a rap, got a nag for the facts. I'm that representing in the back of the class. That rap and don't make them bloom black on the track. I got drop booking like a candy, they lack. And we're back here on TSSN Radio. I'm Chandler Morrison here with Sean Cooley for the Stank of the South radio show. Sean, uh, you know, you've been at this for a while, haven't you? I have. I have. seems like too long sometimes. <laughs> so when did you start? How did you get your start? I started uh, as a joke, actually. Uh, when I was a senior in high school, there was a, there was a kid that I'm not going to name any names, but... We would always we didn't pick on him, but we was always like uh, he always tried to rap. So I was like, I can rap better than you. I'm not even a rapper. And then I started, and I was like, actually, this is kind of cool. So then I figured out how to record and stuff, and I fell in love with it. So here I am. And, and I noticed I used to be I used to kind of rap a little bit, um, but you know it's kind of one of these things you get to it, and it's kind of addicting, ain't it? Yeah, I I literally haven't stopped since 2011 that's when i graduated it's almost been five years holy crap but yeah <laughs> literally i i started taking it serious in 2013 probably because i made the move from chattanooga to murfreesboro to pursue that mm -hmm. so yeah so speaking of murfreesboro you're you go to mtsu correct? i do i do and uh majoring in audio production that's true how, how is that up there uh it's it's actually really cool uh they have many students like eight like professional studios uh they have pro tools classes they have i mean anything you can really think of so it's been a really good experience for me and uh i have one more semester so i'll be graduating in may so what are you gonna do as soon as you graduate i uh, have no idea i'm <laughs> i'm just kidding i'm gonna try to find a studio job at first and uh keep me doing music and uh try to blow up soon like i mean that's really all i can do just work it takes money to make money so you gotta make it now you were telling me a story earlier <laughs> about um, when, while you were at MTSU in a class. Yeah. I, I, I just want you to share this story. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I, ha I have I'm taking a hip hop class. I actually took my final. Uh, now, how last does week. That, now how does that work? How does a hip hop it's, class work? It's hip hop culture and uh, and just really just everything, all aspects. It's poetry. It's I mean culture. It's everything. It talks about the, all the elements of hip hop. It's really cool. But uh, the, the the ending project was to present a song, and 
me being one of the only uh, white kids in there uh, <laughs> and talking like I do, um, I presented my song and I had some looks of like, uh, what the crap just happened? <laughs> like they had no idea that I even I even rapped or or even was any even good at all, but. This girl said, uh, you sound like you're from South Alabama. And that made me realize that I sound like this. So I tried this one chili and it set my mouth on fire and I had to drink a two liter of Mountain Dew. This is, this is what I sound like to this girl. And that alarms me a lot that I need to work on my voice. But, I mean, it was really cool. Uh, everybody seemed to like it. So that I mean that was. Now, are you a Mountain Dew or a Sun Drop person? I, I'm, I'm more of a Sun Drop guy. I mean, I, I can drink anything really, mm -hmm. but I like Sun Drop <laughs> a little better than Mountain Dew. So it might have been a little different than that. All right, give us your best Sun Drop impression of that. <laughs> I don't even. What do you say? I don't even know what he said. All right, I'll play a good boy. I tried this one chili and it set my mouth on fire, and I had to drink a two liter of Mountain Dew. <laughs> I tried. <laughs> I can't do it, dude. I, I refuse. It's not in my rider. I refuse. Oh, man. I refuse. Well, you know, I mean, you know, talking as, as, as a musician, you know, it's kind of a cliche question. You probably get asked it a lot, but, but who are your influences? Uh, that's influences. That that begins that begins from my parents, really. My parents, they've, they've been through a lot. Um, Dad's been in a wheelchair since I was one. Uh, my mom has fought uh, three brain tumors and cancer, mm -hmm. and one. Thank God. Uh, and really, just just uh, people who supported me from my church, uh, and and obviously musical influences. Um, Eminem is one. Obviously, uh, I love him. J. Cole. Really like what he's doing. Logic. I feel I sound a lot like Logic does. <clears throat> I also like a lot of Christian rappers as well. I feel they don't get the respect that some deserve, really. Um, NF, he's really, I've really started to listen to him a little bit. Andy Menio, Lecrae, um, just a lot of those guys. I try to incorporate all of that into into one sound. And, and, and me being from the South, having a little bit of Southern influence in there, maybe not as much as what you just heard that guy sound like. No <laughs> hip hop. So, so we're we gonna hear like that that sound bite on one of your your next your next tracks. <laughs> I'd probably get sued or something if I put that on there. Like they, I don't know if they'd like that too much. Understand. Um, so you know, talking about you know the music and it, it kind of being you know you're kind of breaking the mold a little bit, kind of looking in there, uh, just because you know you you got y'all not only you're white, not only from the south, but you're a Christian and you, and you're not. A Christian rapper, exactly like you were talking about. Right, I, I I try to I try to make real music, and that's just that's just me, uh, mm -hmm. me being me, and yeah. and I'm telling stories of what I've been through, what I see other people go go through, um, <clears throat> and that's not all. I mean, people get the impression that a Christian has to always talk about Jesus, always has to talk about God, and and that's really important to talk about. But uh, I mean, I I like to I like to have fun with it. I like to. Uh, just tell stories of my my childhood, my past, my present, and you know the future that I see myself going into. So that's really what I just try to do. I'm a, I'm a Christian that raps, not a yeah. Christian rapper. Mm -hmm. So you know, talking about that, well, that's a blur sound. Uh, I like it. <laughs> uh, talking about that, you know, your gig, the kind of gigs that you do. Do you you kind of go in between? You know, do you do any churches? Do you go out in the in the bar? Where, where are you at? I'm I'm anywhere you want me to be. Usually, like I mean, I, I'm not going to change my content for anybody. I mean, if if mm. if a church wants to have me, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about what I'm gonna talk about. I'm probably gonna be more Jesusy, more mm. God, yeah, more God influenced if I'm in a church. But if I'm in a bar, I'm not gonna be talking about getting drunk because I just don't do that. It's not not the mm. thing for me. Other people do. That's cool. I mean, mm. that's whatever you want to do. But I'm just gonna be talking about real stuff. I mean, I've been to bars. Uh, I've been to clubs and and performed. I've been to outdoor events. I've been. Uh, we had a really cool event uh, in 2014. Yeah, 2014 of May, uh, we had a benefit uh, for suicide awareness, mm -hmm. and we had it was in Bledsoe County actually, and we had 350 to 400 people show up, and it was really cool. We had all we had all genres though, so I mean, I mean, you get what you get with me. I'm not really yeah. changing my content for anybody. You know and. And, and talking about all that, you know, and, and you get to you get to work with a lot of people in this business. Who is probably 
I don't want to say a favorite. Top three. Give me your top three that you've worked with. Uh, you know, you know, it's always fun to work uh, with uh, a friend that's been with you from from the beginning. And I'll I'll name a, I'll name three from the beginning, and then I'll name a couple more. Like um, Harrison Murphy mm-hmm. sings with me, raps with me, done it since the beginning. Uh, Garth Pendergrass has been the same way. Eddie Machiavelli, as he's known as. <laughs> Jared Patmore, he does he doesn't rap much anymore because he's busy, he's working and stuff, he's trying to take care of a family. But he's always been with me from the beginning. Mm-hmm. Um, Illuminate, uh, he's my uh, roommate or my housemate. We live in Murfreesboro together. Very talented individual. Go check out his stuff on YouTube and SoundCloud. And uh, who else? Uh, I like working with singers. Like probably one of my favorite guys to work with, is Matt Brock. Mm-hmm. That's just because I mean he's he's country as cornbread. He might get mad for me saying that, but he is. He's a he's a really good guy. He's he's a police officer. I respect I respect that. Um, just got out of the academy, so congratulations. Mm-hmm. We've got a few uh, new things on the way. We've got a, a few old things that we're going to play for you today. So that'll be some of the guys. I mean, there's others as well, yeah, but yeah. I don't. I don't want to. There's always too many. There anytime you do an album, there's always so many people to thank. Exactly. I mean, you, you know, you you open the front album of cover, you see all that. You always see his artists. They're thanking it. They're yep. thanking everybody. Yeah. But you know that never is the full list. <laughs> I forget every time I print one up. I'm like, crap! I forgot thirty people. Like, and they're gonna be mad at me. But yeah, I think I think you, you could title it all when you put everybody from the Squatch Valley. Yeah, you know? that's what I did. Like, I I just said everybody. <laughs> and I forgot to, but I was gonna bring the actual like hard copy disc of Dreamcatcher. I have right. it. I still have it at my house. Um, I went and got it from you one day in the Walmart parking lot. Right. I just went and bought it. You know, uh, it shows you Sean Cooley, real sensible guy, right. will do anything he needs to to go out there and get you what you need. Exactly. Um, even if it has to happen in the back of Walmart parking lot. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> Made many sales. Made many sales uh, in the back of Walmart. You make here, you just, hey, I got a, I got a CD yeah, for you. Where it you looks know? like a drug deal <laughs> yeah. and get pulled over. That'd be, that'd be awesome. Uh, you know. They they just hear you talk and they say all right you're good to go yeah or, <laughs> yeah they, they they usually just see me they know who I am oh, yeah he ain't got anything he got anything. <laughs> he got music he ain't got anything yeah. else um but you know we're gonna play a song here um it's called Walk Alone featuring you know Matt Brock you want to say anything about this before we go on uh, just just listen to the words that's that's all I got to say just listen to it and vibe with it all right we'll be right back. Just be patient with me, pace with me, pray with me. This one's for the ones who chase women and relate with me. I'll be straight with you. Lately, I've been on the edge. Mama diagnosed again. My feet just dangle off the ledge. Homies killing one another. Kill itself for something less. Put my faith in Jesus Christ. Satan's winning the game of chess. I know. I know, I know that things will be alright I don't show up but I'm scared I might not make it through the night Keep emotions in check Never let you see me cry That's the life that I've been living Sometimes I have too much pride But, but Can't nobody tell me nothing I can read the writing on the wall Yeah, you gotta start from something I'm on this road and I'm all alone Can't nobody tell me nothing I can read the writing on the wall Yeah, you gotta start from something I'm on this road and I walk alone I'm on this road and I walk alone I'm on this road and I walk alone Ain't nobody tell me nothing I'm on this road and I walk alone I leave my heart on the mic Probably still don't have your respect Sometimes I wonder, is it worth it? Will I live to regret The fact that that's your friends and family Unintended neglect I swear I promise I don't mean it I'm just trying to make you proud I ain't in it for the fame I ain't in it for the power Every time I lose my 
myself. I play a beat and I ain't fat. I'm just trying to make a name to show the world is who I am. It's cool. But can't nobody tell me nothing. I can read the writing on the wall. Yeah, you gotta start from something. I'm on this road and I'm all alone. Can't nobody tell me nothing. I can read the writing on the wall. Yeah, you gotta start from something. I'm on this road and I walk alone. I'm on this road and I walk alone. I'm on this road and I walk alone. Ain't nobody tell me nothing. I'm on this road and I walk alone. And we're back here on the Stank of the South radio show, TSSN Radio, online radio, here with Mr. Sean Cooley. And, and, and Sean, what went into that song? A whole lot of heart. <laughs> and by the way, that was uh, Walk Alone uh, with Sean Cooley featuring Matt Brock. A whole lot of heart, really. I, if, you, if you listen to it, I'm, I'm talking about some personal issues uh, I, that I fight with. The second verse, I've, me being, uh, my self-esteem being a little low. <clears throat> but getting through it, my first verse really talking about my mother, uh, situation she's been through, and and kind of the whole thing. But uh, just a lot of heart, and just just something for the people to hear and and relate to a little bit. And you kind of, and, and do you prefer like these songs where you get to have a lot of emotion, get to put that in? Because a lot of times you don't get to do that with with a lot of songs. I, I love it. <laughs> I love painting a picture for people. But I mean, it's obvious. Uh, with music the way it is now, a lot of people don't like that as much. They wanna they wanna be popping bottles and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just not gonna be doing that. But yeah, I enjoy it a lot. You know, and uh, going some of your other songs, we we got, we got to talk about Dreamcatcher. That was one of the um, big. That was that was your second album, or uh, it's, I have a lot of albums. Like yeah, I, that's 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 really probably my second one that i took serious uh it's it's a mixtape the only only reason it's a mixtape is because i i I don't own the beats they're leased uh but yeah Dreamcatcher, that's just really uh really a lot of elements of hip-hop into one like i i kind of hit all all aspects i feel uh beat wise lyric wise you know flow wise all that kind of stuff and uh we just we just put it together and put it out for the people now you're working on a project right now what goes what goes into the process of, of starting? How do you start a project, and how do you, you know, what's the process as you go through? Well, you always got to have inspiration. Uh, you you got to find that, and I, I've had, <laughs> I've had a lot of writer's block lately. Not really that I couldn't write anything. Inspiration more than that. Just like I don't want to say the same thing over again, and kind of thing. And what I'm doing now <clears throat> is I'm I'm actually producing all my own beats. So firsthand, I get I get a I get to make the beat what i want it to sound like and you don't always you don't always get to do that whenever you're looking for beats but i'm doing that and uh i'm kind of just letting letting that take its place and and i'm making a lot of beats now trying to get some hooks going and uh get a theme i've actually got a theme for it uh it's going to be called the curse of a dreamer it will be released in the summer of 2016 um no i'm not in any hurry right now but uh, i'm just trying to get the best project as possible now, is this the first time you're telling anybody about this project? This is. This is a exclusive. <laughs> exclusive interview here with Sean Cooley. Uh, next project coming up this summer. Uh, and and, and, and you got to kind of explain to people, too, you, you're still a full-time student. I am, and it, it and, and working full-time. Mm-hmm. I do construction, uh, which is awesome. I love doing that. I, I, like, I, like, I like building stuff with my hands and, and screwing stuff up and having to rebuild it. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, I... I I'm always in my in my mind. Maybe I shouldn't be. I'm always thinking of of music moves. I'm always thinking of lyrics, beat ideas, 
Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm always just really focused on that. And, I mean, it's hard being a student and working and, and, and making music. Mm-hmm. But uh, I'm finding a way to do it, and we'll see how it goes. And I feel like it's kind of the same boat I'm into. I, I do sports, and I'm always thinking about sports. How can I do this? How can I do that? And so there's a lot of similarities kind of between, I guess, not going to say journalism, music, but, you know, just kind of the performance industry yeah, kind of thing. Exactly. I mean, you, you always got to be concentrating on it a little bit yeah. if you want to improve. Yeah. Like, if you want to mm-hmm. improve, if you want to stay the same, you, you can just do it every every now and then. Yeah. But I'm always in the studio, man. I I miss I miss a lot of things. I I have a, fem- in, in, a female that, that really wants – well, she doesn't want it. She needs more attention than I give her, and, and she understands, though. But, I mean, I do what I can. And, and talking about some of your songs, uh, you did a music video for Tells the Underground, right? I did. Is that the only one you did on that album? or uh, Walk Alone, I did a video did that one, yeah. and Tells from the Underground. And you did kind of the Walk Alone. It was kind of a single before the It was. Tape, yeah. I released it uh, around Christmas time of last year, so it's almost been a year, and that's, <laughs> that's really – it's went by fast. But yeah, that that was I wasn't for sure if I was going to put Walk Alone on there or just keep it as a single, but I felt like it fit what Dreamcatcher was. Mm-hmm. And so I just decided to put it on there. Okay. We're going to go and uh let you listen to Tales from the Underground with uh Sean Cooley by Sean Cooley. And you yeah. didn't have any features on that one. Uh great. Matt actually sang some yeah. some vocals on it. He wasn't featured per se, yeah. but uh yeah, he is on it. He's doing part of the chorus. Uh enjoy that. All right. Here's Tales from the Underground with Sean, uh, by Sean Cooley. Said I love you more than you ever Sleeve. I'm tainted, I often bleed I'm hated, I often see what they say What they believe, I'm focused They know I'm potent, the bold is my flow heroic I'm open, so won't you throw it Devotion is more than lower, but What's happening, I'm a product of the crime I only fear is losing touch Of what I love before my time My only wish is to paint a vivid picture To the blind, not the physically impaired I'm talking mentally to climb can, can you feel that in your soul Let the moment take its toll They're trying to keep me apart, but I got visions of the road Switching kids trying to take off who let me score like a goalie I'm giving back what y'all handed me I'ma take what you owe me You feel me? One, two, you cursed if you're true Three, four, you may never even blow Five, six, they don't care if you can spit Seven, eight, you better pray they can't relate Ain't no love for an up and come up but I refuse to be another number Now the back of is the tissue They dark in their cool. windows tinted I just hate it too much to love it Back on my feet with the shackles around my ankles A lot, whatever happened to storytelling I'm talking hip-hop, I'm talking biggie The M&M's, the Nas, the Pox On the radio, they put the culture in a box Hold on, let me talk a little quick Keep your attention, I'ma get it Ripping and fitting, I'm independent Every individual will hear me know that I'm different Every individual living will feel the rhythm I'ma kill it, I'ma sing, spit it, make it for the venom Hit it with an 808, they be Hit it base hit, but I'm coming for the pennant, feeling with it, huh? Yeah, Lord knows I've been praying I just want the success I pray to God it won't change me Mom and Dad, I hope you're proud It's the man that you made me I know you wanted more from me But one day I'm finna make it I'm climbing a mountain Expecting a battle Hope you understand I'm giving them rebar So you know what's underground Yeah, by point of view from the low end These are tales from the underground And they all to be spoken, you feel me? One, two, you cursed if you're true Three, Four, you may never even blow Five, six, they don't care if you can spit Seven, eight, you better pray they can't relate Ain't no love for an up and come up But I refuse to be another number Now the back of is the They darken their windows, tell I just hate it too much to love it And we're back here on the Stank of the South radio show, TSSN radio, online radio, excuse me, here with Sean Cooley. I'm Chandler Morrison. 
you know, talking about that song, uh, you know, you were kind of talking to the break, kind of about the, uh, you know, the the this is kind of the start. This song is kind of the start of the movie. Can you talk a little about that? Yeah, this this song kind of kind of sums up the kind of movement that I'm that I'm trying to build, and it's a it's it's more of a blue collar approach. Uh, hence the name that I'm just releasing now. Nobody's ever heard this, so you guys are getting this too. Blue collar visionaries. That's that's kind of the brand that I'm trying to go for, and it's it's more of just a hard work approach and and a and a like a southern rockish hip hop type of sound, um, and it's it's more of the thing like we're not the CEOs, we're we're the guys digging in the ditch, we're working, we're trying to build it up, and uh, that's just the kind of sound I'm trying to go for because not a lot of uh, hip hop artists out there have that kind of sound right now. Even at the top, you kind of look; it's all. I mean. Even with the Christian right, it's kind of more of like a you know you're you're kind of just in the studio. Da, da, da. They're not. Yeah. I mean, they work hard. Don't get me wrong, oh, but it's 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 just the kind of vision they have. Um, you know, and and talking about music, you're talking about your upcoming album and all this. When you when you sit down, and you write a song. What what goes to your mind? What do you do first? What take us through the process? My my process is different every song. I'll be honest with you. It 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 depends on what I'm if I have an idea beforehand, but usually. Uh, before I found beats, now I'll make them. I'll make the beat, and it sounds cliche, but I let the beat talk to me, <laughs> and it tells me kind of what to write. And and I think that's more of the Lord telling me what to write. But but that, that's kind of it. Um, but sometimes, like I have a couple ideas right now that I I'm trying to make a beat fit the lyrics that I've kind of wrote down. That's very rare that I do that. But usually, I just I'll, I'll make the beat and then put the words together, then mix it, master it, and and there you go. While we got Sean Cool in the studio, I thought, you know what? Why don't we get into a freestyle right here, live on uh, the Sing of the South radio uh, show? All right, all right. And I've got a beat for you here. Okay. And it is uh, now. This is the instrumental, I believe, okay. to "Believe Me" featuring oh, okay. Lil Wayne featuring Drake. Yeah, I can, I can handle that. And uh, so I was gonna give this to you, let you just kind of do what you do. All right, give me just a second. Let me get some water. And uh, we'll uh, we'll go from there. And uh, then we'll talk a little about a little <clears throat> sports. But uh, here's Freestyle here by Sean yeah. Cooley. Check, check. And um, here we go. All right. Look. Got a lot to say. I ain't gonna play like I'm Tebow in the NFL. I'm trying to find a way. So Quachie County, Tennessee. I put that on my plate, it's a shame if they don't place me top five in the state Whack rappers open their mouth, all I hear is white noise You ain't gotta go to Denver to find the coldest white boy Them rappers trying to check me, that's a check of my void So I'm throwing my life away, well I guess that's my choice Feel that? That's some heavy flow for you Boy, I know that I be sick Here's an antidote for you Kill the track with no warning They ain't laughing no more I had to raise the bar Now I'm feeling so sore Lyrical murderer Off the top like convertibles Heard they murmuring over A certain one they concerned with Yeah, I'm ill so sick Hop on the track and it's terminate Boy, I been fly been bumping Check out my turbulence, huh? They don't even know what I'm about to do to them Had them for a second But now I think I be losing I'm painted a picture But that depiction is illusion Raised in the valley That's right, I'm a who Again. So fancy, no Iggy thought I would tell him that sweetness. Walter Payton got them haters running back. Long sleeve plaid shirt, like a lumberjack. Stone cold boy, I make him wonder where the stunner at. Cold flow in August, where the summer at. An open minded kid from the south, finna shut it down. Done lap, Tennessee, that's why I be. I wasn't supposed to rap. Hi, hater, that was my beat. I don't care if you don't like me. Hip hop in my veins, stuck like an IV. Trash rappers are poison like some ivy. I'm paving the way for the ones who be behind me. Dope as a young and been in the game since 19. Now I'm 22 and they checking me like some Nike. I don't hear the critics, so I'm definitely eating the blind. See, I see my vision clear, my focus solely on the rhyme scheme. Believe me. Cools. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's all I got for you, I think. <laughs> Yeah, uh, you heard it first here on TSSN Radio. That is Sean Cooley in a freestyle here. Now I gotta be honest with you, dude. When you do a freestyle, I'm, I, I've been I've been kind of in the in the hip hop shoes before. Yeah, uh, we actually and uh, a lot of people know this. We actually did a, a track together did. with uh, I was part of No Shame. We did one. It's called uh, Haters. Haters. Yep. Haters. What you think about that that project though? Oh, it was it was good. Like I, I like I liked the the lyric the lyrics in it, and I liked I mean just how we how we delivered what we wanted to say, kind of thing. Like I mean, not everything's going to be flashy. Not everything's going to I mean be something to dance to. Sometimes you gotta 
you've got to explain what you mm-hmm. want to say. And that was one of those cases where we did that. Oh, yeah. And, uh, you know, going out from your freestyle, do you have a lot of things you kind of have in your mind? Just kind of if someone asks you, like, when someone asks you for freestyle, what do you do? Do you just uh, like, uh, <laughs> uh? It depends. So it, it really honestly depends on the beat. If I'm feeling the beat, I can usually uh, muster up about a minute or two. Uh, if I'm not, if, if, the, if the beat's hard to freestyle to, I might just like, I don't know, I might just like pass on it and find another beat or something. But, but usually a lot of times I'll have people uh, uh, have, a, have words thrown at me. And I'll just kind of go with that and just say the words that they do. Sometimes I can do that. Sometimes it's uh, harder to do, but that's kind of the thing. All right, now we got to talk some sports because this is a sports show. Let's do it. The sports. I'm all about it. Um, uh, Sean over here, also a big supporter of the Tennessee Vols. Huge. Go Big Orange, right? Huge. Rocky Huge. Top, baby. Rocky Top. And uh, repping the Atlanta Braves cap. I am, even though I'm slightly disappointed in the direction that we've been going. But <laughs> I, I mean, that, that they kind of just kind of traded the entire team almost. Uh, I mean, they, they've they kind of understood. I mean, ever since the BJ Upton signing, it's kind of been like rolling downhill, but – but I, th- I mean, I really think they're going to be uh, they're going to be all right in a couple of years. They're getting a lot of young talent, so I mean, it's hard to watch now, which is terrible. But and, and it kind of seems like they've not been the the World Series champ, but they've been getting deep in the playoffs though. So they, they had, they had, but I mean, it's probably not coming this year. Yeah, so I understand. Yeah. Know. <laughs> you heard first from Sean Cooley here. <laughs> a lot of first in the studio today. <laughs> um, but you know, talking about going switching over to college football. Oh, yeah. There's always something to talk about in college football. Always. Always. And, and you got Tennessee, who will be at the Outback Bowl, okay? And I think that'll be a successful outing. I'm not sure how they'll go against Northwestern. Oh, yeah. There's been a lot of, you know, transition this year. I think Northwestern is a better team than what we're looking at, even though they're 12th ranked. That right. should say it's a good team, but I think they're a better team than what they look at because the Big Ten this year has been really competitive. Yeah. And as much as I'm an SEC fan, and I hate to say that, <clears throat> Big Ten right now is probably better across the board than the SEC. If if you look at the top four teams from the Big Ten, you got uh you got well Michigan State, Ohio State, Michigan, and Iowa. Those those can match just about anybody right now. Even though Tennessee did kick the crap out of Iowa in the bowl yeah, game in the, the bowl previous game. year, we're not going to talk about. We're that. We're not going to talk about that. That's last season. That's that's under the bridge. But, but. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I would I would agree. I, I may not agree on as a whole. Because the bottom part of the Big Ten is pretty awful. Like you, yeah. you got the Purdue's of the world, you got those kind mm-hmm. of teams. But uh, I mean, we got Vandy and those kind of teams too. But I, I think we'll see with with this Northwestern game just how good their their bottom echelon is. Yeah, because I think Northwestern being ranked twelfth, I mean, that's you got to give some credit to them. I, I would. I, I think. If you're asking my opinion, I think they're slightly overrated and yeah. overranked a little and, bit. And maybe they're still in the top 25. Yeah, but. they they are, they are. But uh, I I think Northwestern. I've I've watched uh, some film on them. I know I sound like a coach. I've watched some film on them, and they they look to me like a lot like Missouri did mm-hmm. with a good defense and yeah. a very below average offense. Mm-hmm. Which I mean, they're probably a little bit better on offense than Missouri is because they were awful. But yeah, and talking about this outback bowl, you know, we got to transition into next year because once you get to bowl season, it's about what's going on next year. Right. Unless you're in the playoff, it's about what's going on next year right. and what transition. And Tennessee's still young; they've got a lot of juniors. They are. Their success <clears throat> could be hindered on this off season. Right. Come April. They could have some trouble, and here's why. This is Butch Jones' press conference on uh, the 7th, December 7th, uh, about the Outback Bowl. Well, hold on a second. About the Outback Bowl. <laughs> you know, that's just the world of college football. Uh, transition is going to happen, uh, you know, and that's just part of it. And it's the world that we live in. It's instant gratification. It's If they can better themselves and say, well, we'll support them. But, you know, not as of right now. Uh, but as you know, it's kind of become the norm in college football. And, and Butch Jones there talking about, you know, players going to the NFL earlier, you know. I mean, you, you and, and, and kind of it's, it's happened earlier with football, I think, over the years that people just, hey, let's go, let's go to the pros. 
uh, instead of going on our senior season. But but I, I agree with it because most of the time they've got the degree after three years. <clears throat> yeah. You know, most of the athletes they do. Right. And, and especially if they're at a big time university, they, they train them to do that so they'll have a degree before they get out and they don't right. have to deal with going down the road and it costs the university more money for right. them to come back and get their degree. Right. Um, but do you, do you think that all these players will stay? And what do you think the situation is with that? I, you know, I believe, I believe at the most. I think maybe Cam Sutton will leave. That's that's me being being logical. And Cam Sutton may be a first or second round pick if if we're being honest. I mean his 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 stock did go down a little bit towards the end of the year or towards the uh, midpoint of the year around the Florida game. Um, but uh, Jalen Reeves Maben, I think I think he's going to stay. Because uh, uh, he's a tackling machine, but mm-hmm. I, th- I think he's he's going to raise his stock next year. And I don't think I think right now if he went, he might be a third to six round pick. Yeah. That's my opinion. I don't I hadn't listened to Mel Copper or anybody, but that's my opinion. <laughs> I, I think he should stay. I, I wish they all would stay as a, as a fan, but I think Cam Sutton uh, is more likely to leave than the others. You know, I think this is going to be. This was I remember two or three years ago they were talking on ESPN about this, and they were saying yeah. Tennessee's going to be good, but they have to do it, and they were talking about doing it this year. They had to do it this year because those players were going to leave if that happened. Now, this is a different situation than an Alabama team who last year lost in the playoffs, didn't get a national championship. Right. For that, that's different. They reload. Yeah. Okay? <laughs> Every year. And they, they've won championships. Probably the, the senior on that roster has won a championship, okay? With Tennessee, though, they haven't won a championship. I right. think the goal is still there. I think they still want to win it. If they if they can keep all those people there, all these players that are you know going to be seniors this year, I think they will have success. But it's going to hinge on April. Yeah. How many of them say, you know what? I need to make money. I need money, and that's fine. I, I understand that. that. That's that's kind. Of, I'm all right with that. You know, and and I was listening to Colin Cowherd's show the other day, and Mark Rick was – or not Mark Rick, I don't know why. We're talking about Mark Rick here later. Uh, <laughs> spoiler. Um, but no, I was talking about – watching John Calipari, he was talking, and he was saying, you know what? We got these kids playing one year in basketball, and they're done. Yep. And, you know, he said and, – and it's not the kid's fault. We we tell the team. We tell the team. I, I go to the team every day. He, 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 t- he said – I tell the team every time I talk to him, he said, you realize this is a 19-year-old kid. Yeah. You realize he's not fully developed, right? You know, right. you know, he's not teen. He's not teen. Deal with it. Yep. You know, but in college football, it's later in the game. They usually they can't leave it till at least their sophomore year. I don't believe uh, junior year. You can be a redshirt sophomore. I think. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think that's correct. But you have to play your junior year, I right. believe, to to leave. And that's kind of one of the things that I don't agree with. I think if they got their degree, fine, go. Right. But you know, you. You got to look as a player. When you commit to a university, you may commit for a one-year c- contract. That's basically how the scholarships go. Yep. But you're committing for four years. Exactly. Basically, what you're doing. Um, and if your stock changes, stock changes. And I understand there are certain situations where money need is needed. I mean, you know, I was talking, watching John Capper. He said, "I walked into houses where the floor was dirt, recruiting a kid." And, and when they said, "I'm going to the," you know, "I'm going to the NBA," and they're a first round draft pick, I say, "You know what? I ain't gonna stop you." Yeah, I wouldn't either. You, you know, that's not that's 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 the money. You right. know, and uh, I think Tennessee is going that way. But by the way, you look at this season. You can't tell me a one loss Tennessee wouldn't be in the playoffs they would, right now. They would. They would be in it in a in a heartbeat if they if they win the SEC championship. Yeah, that's that's the that's the only criteria. If, I mean, if they lost that game, they're not going to be. Well, in. let's 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 say hypothetically that Tennessee had went and had one loss to Arkansas. Okay, okay, and they beat Florida, so they would have the head to head there. Looking at this, I think they would be in the SEC championship. They they would be automatically because yeah. they beat Florida. But looking at this, they'd be playing Ole Miss. Right, Ole Miss here and there. I think they catch them on a bad night. They go to the college football playoff. Yeah. And with a, with a resume of Oklahoma, Alabama, Florida, you've all beaten. You're in it, yeah. You're in the college football and, playoff. And, and you may be number one seed. If Cle- it, it depends. If, I, if Clemson it, is still where they are, I think you're number two seed. Yeah. Just because Clemson is undefeated. Is in the south and they're undefeated. Yeah. Um, I think you. I think maybe Michigan State is over you. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. But you're a two or three. You're about in the same position that Alabama is right now. I think I think they give the benefit of the doubt to the SEC team now with the, with the rankings because right. I mean they put Alabama in front of Michigan State. I honestly believe Michigan State should be in front of Alabama. Yeah, looking at the polls, you, you can you can you can say that. But you can argue if if Tennessee 
if Tennessee loses the Arkansas game, and but they they win, they win Florida, they win Alabama, yeah, but they win Oklahoma. That's a that's an that's an out of conference uh, power, big one, yeah. And, and kudos to Bush Jones for scheduling an Oklahoma team. Yeah. And he may not even schedule it. He may have been scheduled before he, did, he was. He did not schedule it. But uh, whoever scheduled it, I mean, I was I was pretty upset when they scheduled Oregon a couple of years back. Yeah, I was like, there's no sense in doing that when we play SEC. But but since we're uh, we're 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 building, we're getting built. <laughs> and by the way, I looked over the other day. Past seven years, the only uh, win against a Southeastern Conference team by Oregon was Tennessee. Yep, <laughs> and they had played like. And we were ten, bad. ten, and we, they beat us twice, and that was the only they were eight and two against. And one, the, and one of those teams. teams was coached by Derek Dooley, so that shouldn't be any. Uh, yeah, I mean, you throw no. a party. I mean, really, I mean, when you when you go in and beat Tennessee, at that point when you go and beat Tennessee, you're like, eh, yeah. eh, eh. Um, but you know, Tennessee, I believe they're they're one of these teams that could do that. Now, I was listening to Colin Cowherd show. I listened to them a lot. I listened to him a lot. He's pretty good doing what he does. He's he's pretty good he's edgy he's edgy he's edgy i like you um you know and he was talking about how the big 10 was better overall and i do i do feel him but he said sec is is crap that's what i i I saw the exact same thing and i disagree with that i I do too i'm glad you saw because now i have something to talk about (laughs) i disagree um you know we breathe in the south they don't yep and he he's out in California right now he was up in bristol he does he hasn't really been in the south i think if he was he would say look they may be better teams up north, but you're not going to have as many fans. You're not going to have as many hard. It's not going to matter yeah. as much. Ohio State, I mean, Columbus, Ohio breeds Ohio State football, right. but Tuscaloosa lives it. Yeah, it's, it's probably no comparison if, if we're being honest. Yeah, I mean, Columbus may breathe it in, but Alabama breathes it out as yeah. well. I mean, that's just how it goes. No comparison. I, I mean, I don't agree with that. And he's talking about Iowa. You know, and I do agree with what he said with Iowa. We don't need to schedule cupcakes. That's just what that doesn't need to happen. Um, who who was what was it at? Uh, he was talking about Baylor, Iowa scheduling cupcakes. He don't think Iowa was legitimate, which I, I see his point. Yeah, I, I didn't either until I watched the uh, the championship game, and I was like, maybe they're uh, maybe they're a pretty good team. But yeah, but but I think too they had some easy teams, and you got to think oh, Michigan yeah. State's beat up. If Iowa had won that, Michigan State would have said, you know, look, we were beat up. We played better teams. They didn't have to play Michigan. They had to play Ohio State. Yeah, you know, and that's just how it went. But uh, also, I want to talk about Mark Rick, and you know why I'm getting this soundbite rate. He was fired from Georgia, and you you remember this, don't you? I do. I remember the day. <laughs> I remember. I, I was shocked. I was utterly and, and totally shocked. I, I wasn't shocked because I, I had a feeling they were about to make a huge mistake. Because I mean, you don't fire a guy. He he went nine and three, nine and like nine and three. That's it's a very good record. Yeah. And they lost Nick Chubb. And, and by the way, I talked about this last week, but they're a play – they're two plays away from being a national champion two years ago. Right. Or 2012, three years ago. And I had the soundbite on there from, from the Alabama-Georgia game. They're a play away. Yeah. And you can't tell me Georgia wouldn't have beat wouldn't have beat. Oh, they would have uh, they would have done the same thing Alabama did to Yeah. Them. I mean, as closely as those two teams played, they, Georgia would have gone in there – and they probably would have just they probably would have demolished them even more. Because yep, yep. I think I think that Alabama been with the rushing attack, but Georgia was a little bit more balanced. And had that been against Notre Dame, I think Notre, they would have absolutely tore Notre Dame to a lot, shreds. A lot worse. of teams that year would have beat Notre Dame that bad. Let's yeah. just be honest. <laughs> and, and I mean, you know, it, it had been like it it had been worse than the Mantis Teo scandal, you know. <laughs> I forgot about that until you just said. Everybody it. forgets about it, but I I remember that well, and I thought about it the other day. I was like, "Wait a second, that happened at the same this, time." This happened like this actually happened to a human. Yeah, like that like that just it, <laughs> you know. But Rick now at Miami. Here's your press conference. I don't want to make a lot of promises, uh, other than I want to promise that we're going to get to work, and we're going to try to uh, we're going to earn the right for victory. Uh, I'm going to ask our players to take care of business academically. I want them to behave socially, uh, and I want them to uh, do their very best in every area of their life and represent this university in the right way, but also uh, set themselves up uh, for the future by growing into men that uh, can become wonderful husbands and fathers and uh, leaders in the communities that they choose to live in. That's all about you know, and and whether he wins a championship in the future or not, 
I, I, I could care less. But people just want to down Rick. They want to say, oh, he wasn't a good coach at Georgia. Oh, he wasn't a good coach at Georgia. He built young men. That That's that's what matters, okay? And we were talking – we hadn't talked about this, but Sean Cooley over here was the quarterback, Squatch County. Yes. And uh, – I mean, he you you had a role, but I mean, when you looked at your backfield, oh my god! <laughs> like here, here's the thing: we had, I mean, Hunter Lewis, Justice Stewart, Jerry Fain. I mean, just we was loaded, and we didn't have to throw the ball. We didn't, and, mm-hmm. but it seemed like every time we did, it was a fifty yard play action pass touchdown because it was because <laughs> that no because they, they were expecting you to run they, right down the middle. I would look at defenses, and they would literally have nine guys in the box, and I'm like. Um, do you see it? Nah, we'll run power. <laughs> All right, we're going to run power. No, it's more like looking down. Looking yeah. down. We'll run power. We'll run power. Oh, we'll shout, Barger shout, there. shout out to Chad Barger, by the way. <laughs> That's the second show in a row I mentioned his day. Yeah, we, we would just run it down people's throats, and, and he knew it, we knew it. We liked to do it, though. Now, now, your year, when you, when, you, uh, when you were a senior, that was the year y'all played good pasture, wasn't it? Oh, yeah, and, right. and a lot of people don't realize who their quarterback is, Keenan yeah. Reynolds Keenan, of Navy. Yeah, and he plays for Navy, and he does, like, an awesome job. I can't. I think uh, he the – He set the yeah. touchdown record of rushing touchdowns. Yeah. And the Army-Navy game is this Saturday, I it believe. Is. So if you get a chance, watch that. That Keenan Reynolds guy from uh, – he's from good pasture. He, he plays the, at Navy. He, he was the opposing quarterback and, of yours truly here. Yeah, and I remember several people talking about him. Uh, all I remember about that that game was uh, – I don't even remember that game. I remember the Bledsoe game. Oh, yeah. You, I mean, that was probably the best game that you ever, remember. Ever. Like, I mean, we was we was down – what was it? 20 – I mean, we were, we were down at least 17 points at halftime. It might have been 21. And we come back, tie it up in the fourth quarter, <clears throat> going to overtime. We win by one point. They miss a field – or they miss an extra point. It was it was glorious. And snow falling down right as at the end. As, as soon as, as, soon I, as the field goal made it, just the snow start falling. I was there. I remember. I, don't, I didn't play at that point, but I remember that game, and, I, and that's the first time I'd ever rushed the field for a game. And it was just one of those moments you were like, <sighs> I, I, playoffs, <laughs> arrival, coming down to overtime. I remember. You couldn't have wrote a better script. I remember uh, they scored a touchdown in overtime. They scored it, and then they missed the, the extra point, and I was like, uh, let's do it. Let's go. And we ran the same play four times in a row, scored. And and Rodney was a long snapper, and I was the holder for the extra point, and I said, do not bounce it. Cause he, <laughs> and, and he bounced it, and I caught it and put it on my knee pad, and they kicked it through off my knee pad, and I was like, it's meant to be that we beat them. So it was – and, really of course, cool. you had the kicker of a lifetime there. <laughs> Martinez, man. I'm t- him and his brother both, man. They, they were Now, who, who was there when you were a senior? Uh, it would be Juan. be Juan. Lefty. Uh, Lupe, he was – he could he, he could be kicking at Tennessee if he wanted to. Yeah. He, he's probably more of a soccer he was player, un- wasn't he? Unbelievable. Yeah, unbelievable. They, they were all – but I, I remember that year, one, uh, I think y'all playing Notre Dame, and he was like a 50-yarder. Yeah. And they're, they're all over the news, like, where is this guy from? You know, they were like, if they asked him a question, like, or someone asked him a question, like, where are you going to play out when you when you get out of here? He's like, I play soccer. Yeah. Lu- I remember <laughs> I remember Lupe kicked one. We were playing CCS in the pouring rain. He kicked a 55-yarder, and I was like, I don't even know like how that's possible how are we lose it like oh, yeah. how, how how do we ever lose you know that kind of thing you know against ccs too who should have a good kicker yeah I'm, I'm, I'm amazed every every time i see a ccs football game that they don't just like go to the 50 yard line and just kick, hey, kick field goal field goal field goal field goal you win every game i mean Stock up points <laughs> yeah um but get back to rick we got off track there i know it's cool it's cool <laughs> hey anytime you mention the sequential game football it's, it's all cool. right and, and coach barger yeah Shout out to Coach Barger again for like yeah. fourth time on my show right. as a whole. Um, <laughs> Rick, I think he's in a good position there. Oh yeah, I I I agree. I don't I don't see a lot of success these first uh, year or two because he's going to be in the in the position of he's disciplining these guys. Yeah, he's he's probably weeding out a lot of them that that are mm-hmm. that are not going to fit in with him and not buy in. Yeah, but he's always been a great recruiter. And uh, just a good guy. I mean, really, I don't know him, but he seems like a good guy. <laughs> and, and there's a lot of talent in Miami. That, not maybe not yeah. the program, but in Miami, the South Florida talent. And you got to think. A lot of people said, you know, if he goes to South Carolina, which I knew was never going to happen. No, no, no. I, everybody's like, oh, he's not going to have as much talent. He's not going to have this. Blah blah blah. No. I mean, he 
it don't ha- it don't take talent. It takes if you put Rick in a place long enough, he'll recruit. I agree. I mean, South Carolina that that's that that would have been rough. Anyway. And by the way, Muschamp's champs taking over South Carolina. He go he goes from from Florida head coach down to a defense coordinator position at, at Auburn. Doesn't have success there. How do you hire him at South Carolina? I, I want to I know what he's doing to get jobs. Is what I, I wanna, know. Like, I mean, oh, yeah, our, our defense sucked at Auburn. But, uh, yeah. I'll I'm, I'm most champ. I mean, <laughs> I, I'm glad. I'm glad to see that happen. I mean, he may kick our butt, but I doubt it. But, yeah. I mean, who who did they get to replace Rick? Kirby Smart? Uh, is he proven? No. He's not proven. I think on defense side, he's proven. Yeah, but, but – I don't, I'm not sure as a head coach, because let me tell you something. As a head coach, there's a lot more things that go on. Yeah. I mean, with, with the coordinator position, you get to coach. You get to yeah. get down with the kids say, look, this is what we're doing, blah, blah, blah. You're still managing a little bit because you manage your assistant coach. But right. as a coordinator, you look over and, and you, you just get to coach. And that that's the fun part about it. With a head coach, you're having to schedule. You're having to manage. You're having to make sure your kids are doing good in the class. You have to do this. You have to do this. It's this coordinator, you just coach. <clears throat> exactly. I mean – and, and so I don't think Muschamp's ready for those pressures yet. He wasn't ready at no, Florida. Not even close. Not even close. Somehow he still beat us. Uh, he didn't even recruit good, and that's what he's known for. Yeah, he, he wasn't gonna... even a, a great recruiter, and and I just don't know how he's going to upset. I think that's going to be a train wreck, in South Carolina. Yeah, I don't mind it. I don't. I don't. I mind don't it. either. A Tennessee but, fan. I, mean, I, I yeah. like to see them kids do yeah. good. But 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 Rick, he's at he's at Miami, and are we going to see another? 30 for 30 documentary on the U after Rick's all said and done. I mean, it, it may be a different kind of 30 for 30. It may be that he he rose them from the ashes kind of thing, or it may be – I mean, it may not even make that. He may just fail. I mean, you never know. Really, with today, they may not give him – if if you thought Georgia was bad about uh, wanting to win and firing coaches, Miami's Miami, not any yeah. better. Mm-hmm. I mean – They've got all the talent in the world, but they ha- they're in a city that could care less about the program. Yeah. When you're in a city that's culturally diverse and has a lot of traction, I'll give you an example. Chattanooga is just like Miami. Yeah. There's there, and a lot of people don't realize this, but Chattanooga football struggles because there's so many things to do around the city on a Saturday exactly. afternoon. Yeah. And when you do have a home game, you know, besides homecoming, you can't fill a stadium. Exactly. I remember there was a game against Citadel. And I'm not even sure they feel. I'm not even sure it, if they had played Jacksonville State here. I'm not sure that they would have filled the stadium. Right. You know, they played against Citadel, which was the biggest game of the season. They go in, they win the SoCon. Nobody. I mean, I, I was at that game. There was yeah. there was not a lot of people there. I mean, there was more than you would think, but they didn't fill the stadium. Soccer fills the stadium, and the football yeah. can't. Yeah. I don't. <laughs> I, don't I mean, that's that. just that's just how it goes. And you know, I was. And Miami's one of those cities, by the way. Uh, you, you have all loads of talent. Of course, Chattanooga, I wouldn't say they have loads of talent, but the state of Tennessee, the surrounding area, you're right in the middle of SEC country. Exactly. I mean, literally the only reason Chattanooga, UTC, doesn't go up to Division One. look who you got to compete with. Yeah, I wouldn't. Okay, for, for recruits, you look up. Tennessee, Vandy, which is not really a recruit. MTSU even. MTSU, they have to compete with MTSU. You look down, Birmingham. Okay, you got Alabama now. you got Atlanta down that way. I mean, you've got four major – Metropolitan areas within an hour and a half drive. Yeah, I don't, I don't blame them for staying Yeah, you can't do that. But but my, let's go back to Miami, Georgia. Uh, Georgia. Rick, actually, uh, I don't know if you saw this, but uh, Mark Rick did actually stumble and say Georgia at his press conference. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't see he that. He said, I'm glad to be at the University of Georgia. I, I, I mean, Miami. Uh, I told myself I wouldn't say that today. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, look, looking back, I think for Rick it's the right move. For Georgia, not so much. Yeah, it's it's not. I mean, it may end up being here in a few years, but they want a championship now. Is what mm-hmm. the, is what they want, and I don't think Kirby Smart's going to going to deliver that next year or the year after. I I just I don't see him getting past the top two teams in the East. In my opinion, Florida and Tennessee. That's going to be rough. I mean, you never know. I didn't think Florida would be in the position they are this year, and yeah. I was completely wrong. So. Yeah, and and that's one of the things you got to look at. Uh, SEC football is always going to be big, so you know I don't think Miami's going to get the, the what they need for right. you know coverage. And we're going to go on from there. And I'm going to talk for a minute. I don't know how much you know about Sequatchie Valley basketball. Uh, not not too much anymore. I, I, whenever Cartwright played, I knew a little bit, and that's, that's that's about it. I'm in the studio most nights. So, so Daniel Cartwright when he played. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean all those guys. That was a great team, by the way. I think yeah. it was the year after you graduated. Yeah. 
They they went to that sectional run twenty nine and four. They they won twenty seven straight, did they? Yeah, not? twenty seven straight. And uh, golly, <laughs> <laughs> you just don't do that. I mean, it don't matter what 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 level of basketball or any sport you're playing, you just don't win that many games in a row. Yeah, it's it's ungodly how many games they won, and they still didn't get to the state tournament. And, and I don't know. I think Howard was just a good team, and they were like there were a few plays away from beating Howard just, in the just, state tournament. Just takes one game. Just, yeah, just takes one game in that in that atmosphere. Just, and when and when you win so many games, you're bound to lose one. Sometime. Yeah, they lost their last two games they played: Livingston, Howard, and and, it, and all it takes is losing a couple games. And they had a. I wouldn't say they had an easy schedule, but it was an easier yeah, schedule. It wasn't. It wasn't very difficult. I mean, a lot of a lot of parts. I mean, Signal Mountain wasn't as good as they were in the past few years. Notre Dame decent. Bledsoe County, uh, they were, very, they they were, were, were pretty good. They were pretty good. Uh, they, they were more of a two horse show yeah. instead of a you know across the board. Right. Uh, and then of course Grundy County, you never can count on Grundy <laughs> County. I mean, actually, I, mean, I was surprised they they played pretty close with the Notre Dame squad. That's really really good right, right now. And uh, that was last night, Tuesday night. Um, but you know, I mean, it's that was a good team. But I want to talk some some Squatchy Valley basketball. I want to talk about you know, is Van Buren too dominant right now? Is that the case? You know, and I will play this clip from uh, Coach Do- Dustin Sullivan. He's out at Van Buren County, the head coach out there. If I can find it, I thought I had it here. Yep, I do. And um, this is a little clip from him, a little soundbite after the Cell Creek game last Friday. We, that's what we were talking about Tuesday night. And I told you we've got good shooters. You know, when, we, when, when we're shooting the way we're capable of, we can be really good. Uh, you know, and I told the guys in the locker room, you're never as good as you might be on your best night or your best shooting night. You know, and, and, and you know, I think Cell Creek had an off night, and we had an above average night, and it just kind of, you know, it, it kind of steamrolled from that little lot. By the way, Sell Creek, the number two team in that district. And when you look across the board, Van Buren County is going to dominate on the boys' side. The girls' side, probably going to dominate, not as much as the boys will. The boys will always get farther because I talked about last week the, the gap they have to overcome with the girls. It's a big gap. They lose 95-65 in the sectionals, hosting a sectional game. 30-point 30 point loss, okay, and they were giving all they got. They couldn't get to sectionals. Boys barely made it in the state. Very, very close game against Good Pasture. Good Pasture. Uh, <laughs> I don't even talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, what shut y'all down that game, by the way? Man, I'll tell you, <clears throat> they were just good. <laughs> let's, let's, just, let's go ahead and say that. But, I mean, we we come out firing, man. We, we come out, we drive down the field, and we score a touchdown. We get a penalty for holding, and we have to kick a field goal. And we, we kind of just get slowed down. We, we probably wouldn't have won that game, to be honest. We, we could have kept it a lot closer. But uh, we you still see, like, losing by two touchdowns or a touchdown or something like that? I, a couple, probably. <laughs> I mean, we I actually uh, – we, we threw the ball really well that game. Mm-hmm. Like, and that's weird because we didn't ever do that. Coach Barker was like, oh, we're just going to throw it now. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Let's go see what we got. Yeah, and, um, you know, talking about, you know – like I said, good pastor Van uh, Van Buren County doing good. They're what they're really really good shooters. Um, and, and these kids they play up playing AAU basketball, basketball uh, play up playing AAU basketball. And and there's I mean honestly I'll go ahead and tell you, I've I've heard it from several people. You know I heard it from coaches, I heard it from the Whitwell coach, I heard it from other coach uh, other coaches in the district. They don't have anything else to do out there. And not to be mean, they know that. I mean, they don't have football. I'm talking about sports wise. I'm not talking about just county wise. I'm talking about sports wise. They don't have, you know, they don't have football. They don't have these major sports. They have basketball, baseball, softball. I think they got cross country, maybe track. That's all they got. I don't think they have cro- track. I think they have cross country because they don't have track out there. <laughs> and, and not to make fun of them, but that, that's just how it is, you know. And you go out to that school, that school is built around the gym. The school is built around the gym. The, the center of the school is the gym. They play basketball out there. They do good in basketball. And now they've had success in basketball. Actually, I talked to the coaches the other day. They're hosting the the, the, region, the district tournament, first of all. And then second of all, they're getting a new court after uh, during the Christmas break. Merry Christmas, Justin Sullivan. Merry Christmas, Cheryl Cole. We're giving you a new gym. Not new gym. We're giving you a new court. We're working on a new gym. It's gonna be out here in the middle of nowhere. Where the other one is? Uh, <laughs> now I, I can I can say it's in the middle of nowhere because I live in the middle of nowhere too. I live in Dunlap, Tennessee. 
which is a little bit more connected. But but Van Buren County, they have 111s, that vein. We have two veins, I guess 111, 28. East Valley is the vein. Don't you think? East Valley, that, that's that's a, that's God's country right God's there. God's country right there. By the way, Sean lives on East Valley. If anybody, anybody wants to stalk him over there. baby. <laughs> <laughs> now, your studio is actually behind your house, right? It's, it's, I've been in there. It's in my garage, man. It's, garage. It's, it's literally like I build it up. like I, I, I put like a six-by-eight room. I put a six-by-eight room in there and filled it with uh, like echo proof. And just I have a desktop computer in there now. Good, pretty good blue microphone. I'm about to upgrade soon, but uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. And a little sound system, and and we're good to go. Now you were talking about basketball earlier. You don't really, you're not really a a <clears throat> basketball fan, are you? I'm. I mean, I I'd rather play it than watch it. Mm-hmm. Especially NBA, they don't play defense. So mm-hmm. <laughs> while well, I mean they're going to score 200 points each. So mm-hmm. college basketball, I like watching the tournament. Um, I can't watch a regular season. That's just that's just my preference. So <laughs> unless it's like two good teams, maybe. Yeah, like if it's if it's a a Duke North North Carolina like mash clash up or whatever. I don't know. Yeah, something like that. But uh, yeah, we we're talking about Sequatch County. They're rising up a little bit. Girls beat beat Signal Mountain and Aaron Sanders, their big key player there, sixty six fifty eight in overtime. And that's just. I wasn't at that game, but I saw that score, and I talked to some people about the game, and it seemed to me like Sequatchie County is getting their roll on, but it also seemed to me like Signal Mountain just didn't want to play that game, didn't want to show up, and it's kind of how it goes. Everybody always doubts Sequatchie County in basketball, and when they do, it comes back to bite them. That's why there's two games in the season, one to doubt Sequatchie County and then another one to take them seriously. <laughs> That's that's, that's, true. that's about how it goes. Early in the season, Squash County looks good. Later in the season, eh. That's about any sport with us. Uh, yeah. That's if you play is. us twice, it's going to be that way. Yeah. Um, but what's okay, they're going to have to rebuild. Talking, I watched a game last night against CCS. They, they're not the same team. You have to replace five. Count them. Five seniors that took your team to sectionals last year. You got two juniors, I believe he said. And, and with those juniors, they've not had a lot of playing time. You know, J, they've had JV playing time or or late game playing time when you're up by 50. It's not the same. It's not the same as in game. When you're having to run the offense, it's not the same. Um, but they're having to rebuild, and I think they will eventually. It's going to take them a, a year or two. But they've got the talent in place of, to eventually do that. Um, but like I said, Grundy County doing a lot better. Uh, they, 69-60, they've got two brand new coaches, I believe, on the women's and the men's side. And um, they're they're doing good. Uh, girls get a win against Notre Dame. Boys get a get a close close loss, and that's so good for the boys to have a close loss like that um, with, with with Grundy County, even against a team like Notre Dame, who is just off the charts. You know, just good. And you know, I mean, that's just how the the valley goes. Now, I do want to talk for a second before I get off here. And um, I made some comments last week, and I wanted to clarify what I meant by those. I was talking about Notre Dame and the talent gap in 3A. You know, I, I, I don't want to say that I don't like a school. And I, and I don't don't like a school. I mean, I, I, I try not to be preferential. I, I like every school I come into contact with, for the most part. Um, So, you know, I, you look over and people say, well, you don't like Notre Dame. I, I love Notre Dame. I like Notre Dame. But I don't like what they represent. I don't know if you if you have a con- an opinion on this, Sean, but um, I have a, I have what they're against. What what I'm against is them being a private school in the public public league. Yeah. Do you did you you had to play against them a few we, times? We played them. They in, in football definitely. I mean, we we kicked yeah. the crap out of them. They wasn't very good. They were rebuilding around then, but but they have the ability to just say, "Look, we're going to get our athletes and go," and, yep. and from there they just took off. They they can just get them when they when they want to and. And I, I'm not. I'm not I mean, they can't get. They don't have scholarships in the public school right. league, but they can pretty much recruit. Exactly. Um, say, look, we want you to come here. You're going to, have to pay a little bit, but we want you to come here and compete against the best. You know, and and I wanted to make those comments known. It's not that I don't like. I, I love Notre Dame. I love CCS. I love those schools and Boyd Buchanan and all that. But I don't like what they represent. I think I was misquoted or I said it a different way last week. Um. And I apologize for that. If anybody takes it, if you're from Notre Dame, CCS, anything like that, I don't. It's not that I don't like your school. I like your school. I love the coaches. I, I, I'm good friends with the AD at Notre Dame. I'm good friends with the basketball coach at Notre Dame, uh, and, and get to talk to some of these coaches. 
I just don't like what they represent, and that don't. And it's it's kind of like being a Christian. You you hate the sin, you love the sinner. Right. I hate that they're a private school in a public league, but you know what? They're here, so I've got to do that. Um, and that's kind of the way I feel about it. Um, and I don't want anybody trying to take it and saying, "Oh, I hate Notre Dame." Don't try to take it over the Notre, uh, the Notre Dame athletic director. He said he hated Notre Dame. <laughs> don't let his radio come over here anymore. No, no. That was some comments I made last week, and, and that's what I meant by those. I didn't mean any, anything negative toward any school. Uh, I didn't mean anything negative toward anybody in particular. Uh, just the, the idea of it, because I've, I've done a, um, I guess you would call it a. Um, uh, I did a column. That's what it's called. I was looking for the word. I did a column, and Sean, you need to check this out about private schools and public schools. And the numbers show across the board. Yeah, we need to split, but in football, the numbers are even. Right. I think it was twenty percent of the schools in the public school league are private, and then you look over, and across the board, across all sports, over the past ten years, it took me a while to get these stats. I had to get them all up by myself. I went over the past ten years in every sport that has a regular schedule, a regular district setup, like football, basketball, all that kind of thing, like eight sports. Past ten years. 49% of the championships are won by private schools. 19% of the schools are winning 49% of the championships. But in football, 20% of the schools are winning 19% of the championships. But you also got to look over. You got Alcoa, Maryville. Yeah. Who are both open enrollment. They're right. not they're public schools, but they're open enrollment. Right. So anybody can pretty much go there if you really, really have the urge to go to Co or Maribel, which right. a lot of people do. A now. lot of people do. <laughs> yeah, just put me on that football team. It's, it's almost like having a private school. Yeah. Uh, not that they are, but I do want to. I did want to clarify those comments from last week, and that's my extra point for the the week. Um, but <sighs> Sean, what song do you want to send us out on? What what? And you're going to talk about it a little bit. Uh, let's go with. Uh, you got two choices here that I got on the thing. You got Phil Live or Mind Right. Just pick one and we can talk about it. Whatever one you want. All right, we'll go with Phil Live. And, and talk about this before we go because we're going to end on this real quick. Don't don't get creeped out by this song. This is <laughs> this is a story only. It's it's kind of a weird song. I think you'll like it. It's it's older Eminem style. We we uh we put some electric guitar in it. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Randy Sanders. He sings the hook and, and puts some electric guitar in it. Some of you uh Valley people may know him. He uh he was the lead singer for Camp Normal. Um, but, uh, yeah, hope you guys like this. I uh, appreciate you for having me on. And uh, go check out my stuff on Facebook, Instagram, mm-hmm. uh, YouTube, SoundCloud, all that. Yeah, y'all got y'all got, y'all got to check out Sean Kirley. And you, got a, you say you had an event coming up. I do. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Thanks for that. I almost uh, forgot about talking about uh, that. Uh, January the 9th, I'll be in uh, Bledsoe County um, at the fairgrounds. It's the indoor complex, and we got a couple bands coming up there, and they they invited me up there to to have a set. Me and Matt Brock will be up there. We'll be doing some stuff that you heard today, and uh, it's going to be fun, so come out and join us. All right, and uh, also Sean Cooley coming out next summer. You heard first here on TSS and Radio, the Stank of the South radio show uh, with your project called The Curse of a Dreamer. The Curse of a Dreamer. Check Sean Cooley out. Go like him on Facebook. Go find him. You got Twitter? You don't have Twitter, do you? I do, but I never use it, so don't even worry about it. Don't worry about his Twitter. (laughs) Uh, Go check him out on SoundCloud. Uh, Any other music sites you're on? Uh, I think that's it. SoundCloud, Facebook. Go check him out. Search up Sean Cooley. That's right. And tell him Stanks hit you. (laughs) Uh, This is Stank of South Podcast. I'm Chandler Morrison. Uh, Sean Cooley, thank you for being on today. And this is Feel Alive by Sean Cooley featuring Randy Sanders. That's right.
goodbye letter written in my notepad It was signed by you, you really wrote that P.S. I ain't never gonna come back Baby, look, I know we had our differences, but I've been thinking hard I'm tired of leaving voicemails, why don't you ever call? I've been working on a car ever since you've been gone And if it ever starts, I'ma find where you are that made me insane Do you feel good about yourself? What you think is a game? I've been numb to everything Except the pain I've obtained It's like I only take cash Cause I feel like I can't change I can see you no more No matter how hard I try How hard I try I can deal with that It makes me feel alive Feel They could talk, they could put me in the labels They were watching when I was on the tables When I was hiding nighttime, providing the anger I'm telling you I nearly killed myself Handguns on my tip while I wanted to stop I really felt there was no life left You in my soul, is that what you want? You're the only one I really ever had You were my first, I'll make you my last Remember, we were filling to the top of the glass To let the whole night pass but enough of the past, we've been apart for a while, like I'm losing my grass. I'm a student to prove when I'm pushing past all the wrath. Now I'm choosing my path. I can see you no more, no matter how hard I try. How hard I try. I can deal with that. And 